Well, I've moved down to my uh, uh, workshop in the uh, the basement where it's uh, out of the direct sunlight. Uh, it's evening now anyway, but uh, uh, this is my little uh, tinkering station, as you can see. Um, we'll flip. Uh, my name is Tim, of course, and uh, this is part two in uh, my evaluation of the Sansui SR929. And what I've done here is I've done a Bakshi system here. I've just got a, uh, it's a Bluetooth, but it also has a line in. So I've got a line in to a uh, DJ Phono uh, preamp and uh, into the, uh, the, the turntable into this and then this out to the, uh, the speakers. Got those plugged into a power bar. The turntable is plugged into my test on the, uh, the power bar here. And I've got everything wound up, so as you can see, Startup is quite quick, and boom, we're locked on to 33 and a third, which is, oh, we're not actually, because it's slight drift, and that shows me that the Q servo button isn't depressed. So now I've got the quartz servo light locked up, or turned on, and we're locked into speed, which is uh, a good thing. I can't imagine ever using it without the Q servo, but... Uh, but like I say, if you want to uh, play with pitch control on your records, then of course you have to turn that off. Something I never do. Uh, even though I DJ, I, I'm a digital DJ. Okay, so uh, I just roughly um, did the uh, spindle to uh, stylus tip to the overhang distance, basically uh, the spindle tip to the, uh, to the stylus. I had to move it back. Uh, as you probably saw in part one, this thing was all, all the way forward. And uh, it was out to lunch as far as uh, weight and balance and everything. So I balanced it. I'm actually at uh, 1.5 grams. Uh, the cartridge range for the Empire One had to do a lot of research to find it, but uh, the range is about uh, one and a quarter to two and a half uh, grams is the recommended uh, stylus pressure for the uh, for this Empire One. It's an old, old, old cartridge. I think dating back to. Uh, 74 I think um, so I'm, I'm quite sure this was probably the uh, cartridge that was uh, that was on this turntable when he bought it and uh, not sure where he bought it I'll have to uh, ask him some questions so I did all of the uh, I downloaded the user manual as well as the service manual and uh, I did all of the uh, setup routine which means lifting the back end by 100 millimeters adjusting your uh, uh, weight so that's neither uh, moving in this direction, the arm moving in this direction, or that direction in a balanced condition. Uh, set her down and then uh, set my uh, um, anti-skate uh, to the weight that uh, that I've got dialed in. And I think that's uh, it's working good. And then of course I've adjusted everything. I think I'm a little high on the uh, on the uh, arm, so I may have to lift the arm up a little bit, but uh, that's all the uh, stuff I'll do when I'm uh, really uh, tuning it in. There's your cue lever. I'm not right at the beginning, so you can actually see, and, and this is stereo, I'm getting in for both channels, so it's working good. You can see the, uh, the light here on the uh, DJ thing. Whoop, and I just stepped on the dog. She's right at my feet. Sorry, Cole. Didn't mean to do that to you. And we're not going to play this for very long, but as you can see, out of the direct sunlight, where it shows every little dust flake and everything, um, down here in my uh, my den, you can actually see how beautiful this turntable is. It's uh, you know with the uh, piano finish on the uh, on the the plinth, and I tell you, I just about broke my arms carrying this down here. This thing weighs. I think it's 17.2 kilograms, and it's uh, it feels like 100 kilograms. Um, of course, I was understandably nervous taking it downstairs, so I didn't want to uh, bump anything or whatever, but uh, we got her down here safely. And uh, as you can see, the, uh, the RCA, there's an RCA block on it. Instead of having just the cables coming out of the bottom like most turntables do, this they give you, uh, and I don't like this, having an RCA black block with a, uh, a grounding post. What that means is, for me, it means that uh, in the low level um, circuit, which is from the, uh, the stylus tip, 
through the magnets in the in the cartridge through this junction that's one junction then you have another junction so it's a potential for uh, corrosion oxidation uh, hum and that sort of thing and then into your uh, into your phono preamp uh, I like to have uh, basically from the, uh, the head shell junction all the way to the phono preamp as one solid piece of wire so you don't have any, uh, any uh, way that you can have connection problems or whatever. But, you know, some people like having these uh, for utility and for trying different cables and stuff, but uh, then of course you have dissimilar cables uh, going in and out. I'm not a cable guy, but uh, it's still... Um, it's not my favorite thing, but that was uh, in vogue, I guess, with the higher end turntables back in the uh, uh, days of this turntable. I looked it up online, and is uh, I think they were manufactured on a uh, vintage knob that says uh, 76 to 79, which is about right. Um, this was sort of the high watermark of uh, turntables where they, were, they didn't have to um, compete against CDs and cassettes were, you know, a thing, but they weren't... Uh, they weren't the pinnacle like turntables were and, and uh, LPs. People call them vinyl. I hate that term because that's what it's made out of. Anyway, um, here we go. Um, so we're just going to embark on uh, on doing a setup. And uh, I've got the dust cover off for now because I don't want to ding it. And I've got it in the other room and that'll I'll, I'll get that polished up at uh, some juncture when I get my... Uh, McGuire's kit from the boat. I use that to polish all the dials on my uh, uh, flybridge because right, the sun gets at it. So uh, lots of use for those uh, polishing kits for uh, for acrylic. So um, so yeah. So very satisfied with the uh, the sound. I would like to put a much nicer cartridge on there, but uh, anyway, that's the uh, the owner's preference, and uh, we'll see what he wants to wants to do whether he wants to keep it or whether he's going to sell it. And uh, um, yeah, I took the uh, the um, platter off. It's not as heavy as like a Lenko or whatever, but it is a solid chunk of uh, chunk of metal and uh, no dings or anything like that. It's in uh, great shape as as is the uh, the mat, the original mat that came with it. And, uh, you know, I've got the base dialed in pretty good there's no rocking at all with any of the uh, uh, the legs so uh, here's the original 45 adapter uh, it's unusual that they don't actually have like a little post or whatever on these it was just kept off to the side I guess so there you have it um, I'm sure I can dial in this uh, this arm a little bit better like I say I think if you look at it let's have her go down it's probably, oh uh, yeah, it's close to, I think it's a little low on this end, but uh, I'll put a, put a spirit level on it and I might have to lower the arm a bit if I can. I can, that's the adjustment right there. And uh, it's not bad though, it's not bad at all. There you go. So, uh, without hopefully tripping off any, uh, YouTube alerts. There we go, and you can just see the reflectiveness of the uh, of the finish on this thing. It's just beautiful. I love this turntable. I might have to flog one of my Thorns TD160s and maybe keep this. I don't know. We'll have to see. Anyway, um, uh, more to follow uh, as I get uh, get through this turntable. And uh, if you have any questions or queries or uh, suggestions, because uh, these this turntable is new to me, so if there's any owners of these that uh, have any uh, hints and tricks to uh, getting this uh, tuned in, uh, please drop me a line. Thank you.